Yep. Let's start with Jonathan Taylor here. Sure. Struggles continue. Listen, Barry, it's hard to live up to the billing of being a first round pick. It's hard to live up to the billing of being a typical first overall yeah. pick in fantasy. Jonathan Taylor now under eight points per game over his last three games. The Colts offense, bigger concerns. But for Jonathan Taylor right now, is this are we in the mold of this is where we're at right now or is there some kind of hope to turn this thing around and get back to being the elite fantasy running back that he traditionally can be so i think there's two two things right first off it's the injury and we just don't know yeah. understand they play thursday night right i mean so they, they're playing they're a quick turnaround here for a guy that came into that game already banged up and so then he leaves he leaves with the injury and so the concern i mean you know the nfl network is reporting that it's quote nothing serious yep. and not expected to keep him off the field long term but again tight turnaround for a guy that was already a little bit beat up so so that's just that concern right and and i don't know that there is a one for one replacement with taylor naheem hines would be sort of the obvious guy they have Deion jackson on the field lindsey's on their practice squad just in terms of guys that fantasy managers have heard of but feels like it would be a committee in their thursday night game uh that they would play right so so first off there's just i think if you have jonathan taylor concern number one is is like you likely might need a, another running back for Thursday night. The positives are it's the first game of the season, so you'll uh, first game of the week, I should say, so you'll know in yep. time to make an adjustment. The other concern here is, you know, his slow start. So far this season, he's got a, just over 50 points, right? As you see on your screen right here, 3.3 fantasy points in week four against the Titans, 12.1 the week before, 7.3 on the season. He is just merely running back 22. There is reason for optimism, however. Last year, through the first four games, he was running back 20. 2020, his rookie season through the first four games, he was running back 16. He had 56 total PPR points in his rookie year, then 52 and a half, and now at 50.2. So all, like he's within you know four or five points of the first four games of last year and the year before each of where he finished really, really strong and was a top elite fantasy running back. I have a crazy thought, uh, Connor Rogers, which is that I actually think Jonathan Taylor might be a buy low. Let's find out what the injury is. But assuming the injury isn't serious, this is like, oh, he might miss this game. If you're off to a three and one start or even you're two and two, but you feel pretty good about where you are, I wouldn't mind making an offer like a low ball offer for Jonathan Taylor because even if he's not the number one running back in fantasy, which I think right now is probably Saquon Barkley, yep. the fact is is he's still going to get a ton of work on a team that's going to run. I don't. I, I'm nervous about this Colts offense if Taylor misses time. It pretty much it would be Pittman or bust for me. Yeah, the ball security is just a massive issue. Matt Ryan with the fumbles. There's a lot going on there to not be hopeful about. But him being traditionally a slow starter is your glass half full approach with JT. I mean, Ryan's been brutal. I mean, there's no way around uh, hey, it. Question for you. Carson Wentz for Matt Ryan, real NFL trade. Who says no? <sighs> he went there. Right now? Who does? I, th I think we know the answer. It, it has to be Wentz. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, like, it's bad. Wentz has not been great for the Commanders, but he's no, been better than Matt Ryan. That's absolutely right. All right, let's move on here to a much bigger injury, Just right? Saying. Jonathan yeah. Taylor, we think, is going to be day-to-day, week-to-week. Javante Williams sounds much more serious. He was carted off. There is a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of assumptions going on that this could be a long-term significant injury for him. First off, getting away from Javante, because we just don't know if this is a season ender or not. But the impact on the Denver offense, what does it do for Russ, the pass game, and what would be behind Javante? We've seen the Melvin Gordon fumbles be an issue as well. I mean, it's been, it's just been, you know, it's been, it's been tough, right? Obviously, in terms of, in, in terms of how Melvin Gordon has played so far this year, he has four fumbles on the year. That is tied for the lead among all running backs. Now he hasn't lost all of them, but still, I mean, we saw the bad fumble on the goal line yep. in week number one. Bad fumble again uh, this week as well. Uh, you know, Melvin Gordon. Got only one snap inside the 10 after Javante Williams went down. Mike Boone got 65% of the snaps, including six to seven snaps on third and fourth down. Those critical downs. Melvin Gordon, only a 35% snap share. Got one, one snap, literally one snap inside the 10. And so if Javante Williams is to miss any time, and it looks like this is a, certainly a more serious injury than Jonathan Taylor's. Again, we don't want to be... Um, we don't want to rush to anything. We, we will see. But I believe they also play Thursday night. I believe that's the Thursday night game is Colts-Broncos. Yep. So um, 
it feels unlikely as we sit here on a Monday morning and this show's doing live, it feels unlikely that we're going to have Javante Williams or Jonathan Taylor on Thursday again. A lot can change in the next couple of days and we'll hope for the best. But assuming Javante Williams is out for at least Thursday, if not longer, I think both Mike Boone and Melvin Gordon would be priorities. I assume, I haven't looked it up. Someone, Blake, do me a favor. What is Melvin Gordon's roster percentage in Yahoo? I should have looked that up before the show and I didn't. And I apologize about that. But my assumption here is that Melvin Gordon is rostered in most leagues. For sure. You know, I'd be surprised if he's out there. But I think Mike Boone's out there in all of them. And I don't think they really trust Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon's been bad. I mean, he's he has fumbled a lot. Again, he leads the NFL in fumbles. And for a team that's had trouble generating offense, I think Mike Boone is sort of interesting here. Um, he he caught he he dropped the bat. He dropped the pass as the Broncos were trying. You know, uh, was he was he was um, he dropped the pass as the Broncos were trying to mount a comeback. It was a it was a bad drop on him. But still, Mike Boone, who was flash in the preseason, uh, he was with Minnesota. You know, he left there because they just he couldn't find his way sure. in the field with Madison and Dalvin Cook there, obviously. But Mike Boone, I think, will be a priority when we talk about waivers tomorrow, right here in the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. By the way, I'm being told in my ear that Melvin Gordon's available at about 20 percent of Yahoo leagues. So obviously worth checking to see if he's out there in yours. Yeah, and just to reiterate, that snap rate after Javante went out, Boone 65 percent of the snaps compared to 35 percent for Gordon. That's the alarming number for me. So we will have if a, we you will have, have a Melvin big, Gordon. I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, I still think it's a committee. I don't think they all of a sudden want to go full Mike Boone. But my point is, is that if this is a serious injury for Javante Williams, and certainly there's concerns that it could be uh, in terms of the initial reporting, and they're doing an MRI today, which that's not, you know, like, yeah. like no one's asked to, you know, I don't have to do an MRI. Like, when they're, when they're doing an MRI, it, there is real concern there. I don't mean to be flip about it. But so I think it would be a committee with Gordon Boone. And I think there's a chance that we're talking on the next fantasy football pregame about wanting to, you know, after Thursday night games, hey, you want Boone over Gordon. More Boone talk tomorrow on Tuesday's Fantasy Football Happy Hour, but we have to get to the Sunday Night Football recap here in a wild, wild game with the Dude. Chiefs and the Bucks here on NBC. I, so, so I have been saying, oh, Clyde edwards Elaire, so high. You know what I mean? Like it, last week, last week. Dude got seven carries for zero yards. Now he's getting a little involved in the passing game. How? That's so fluky. You know what I mean? Like he's a sell high. And by the way, I'm not alone in that. I believe, I literally believe that if you weren't saying sell high on Clyde edwards alaire you weren't allowed to be a fantasy analyst last week. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was in That's the bylaws. Rumors, I think yes. we, I think we got, we all got the same memo. I, I mean, at some point, I, you know, at some point, 22.4 fantasy points, another huge game for him. He catches the two touchdowns. But what's more important to me is that he got 20 touches. That's the key to workload. You know what I mean? I had I, one of my best bets on my one of my bets on Football Night in America, and I also did this on Fantasy Football uh, pregame, was the under on nine and a half carries for Clyde edwards helaire He hadn't gotten nine carries in a game all season in all three games. And now he's going up against the Tampa Bay uh, run defense, which is fifth best in the NFL. I'm like, there's no way he's going to get double-digit carries. I like the under of nine and a half rushing attempts. By the way, it got so high on BetMGM, it was actually minus 145. So we were all betting the under yeah. on nine and a half. When I gave the, it out, it was minus 115. It, like, so much money came in on the, on, that, on the under, it moved up to 145, minus 145. And yet, we all got obliterated. 19 rush attempts, 20 total touches, a season-high 56% snap rate. It was his first game over 45%. And honestly, Connor, he looked good. Like, I he mean, did look you know, good. give credit where credit is due. He was on the receiving end of that that magic Mahomes. Well, let's let's see that. Oh, do we have that? Yes, let's we look have at that. And it was really. Uh, it helps when your quarterback can do this, right? This is right. not to take away from. So he's Clyde running Edwards around night. for people watching the podcast. He's spinning around. He's doing stuff, and then he just like jump balls it. Over to Clyde Edwards Elaire. Now they're touching each other in the end zone. They're very excited. They're celebrating. Look at Mahomes just whoop, ah, whoop. And I'm doing my best Chris Berman impression. Like just like, oh, like it just literally like it's like a Papa Shot shot. You know what I mean? Like yep. when you're in Papa Shot, you just sort of push it forward. You know, well, and like, and that's just what he did. CEH comes let's hear down from with it. Yeah, Clyde Edwards Elaire had uh, quite the comments on the touchdown catch from his highlight real quarterback. Man, I, I wouldn't, you know, it's to me, so I'll say it's top greatest hit. But, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that I wouldn't say it felt routine, but it was, uh, 
you know, made eye contact with him at, at one point, and then I was like, eh, I don't think this is going to be good. Let me just kind of figure out and go this other way. And then once I kind of felt two guys in front of me, I was like, well, obviously nobody's behind me. I knew, you know, I knew the route concept that we had going on. And, you know, once I kind of seen his eyes take, come off that, that read behind me, I knew I was, you know, in, could slide back into some open, open position. So let me put a bow on the Clyde edwards alaire conversation. Do you double down on the sell high now? Is this as good as it's going to get? I feel like it is, but honestly, the running back position is so brutal. And this success in such a huge game, off the loss to Indianapolis, coming into Tampa Bay, an emotional game for the Buccaneers, given everything that's going on in Florida, and they just dominated. They dominated a very good defensive line. The offensive line played great for Kansas City. CEH, even though Isaiah Pacheco got some. Yes, and, and ran hard. Jeff, and, uh, ran real hard. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Isaiah Pacheco, like, yeah. you know, he was a man. But still, CEH got out there. It is now... Three of the four games he's had over 74 yards from scrimmage. We know it's a team that's going to be in scoring position often. No, I'm backing off the sell high. Like, okay. I, I mean, if somebody's willing to give you a first-round value for CEH, sure. But I'm, I'm off the, hey, this is a fluke. It can't continue because 20 touches is 20 touches. You're getting 20 touches for an Andy Reid. Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes offense, I'm in. And so um, – Asked and answered. Hats off to uh, CEH. And uh, listen, you caught me some, uh, cost me some money. Bet MGM is very happy with you, Clyde Edwards Elaire. On the flip side, the Bucks offense back on track. Brady's best game of the season by far. No coincidence, Mike Evans returns, has a huge volume game, has a huge production game. Yeah, Feels we, good to trust Brady again, right? A thousand percent, by the way, as long as I'm beating myself up on having, you know, missing out on the uh, the under on the rushing attempts. I did also on Football in America call anytime touchdown for Mike Evans. He ended up getting two. So nice he by did the way, twice. He was, and he was at plus money on Bet MGM as well. As we sit here and look at some of the fantasy wide receiver leaders and fantasy points, Jefferson, of course, number one overall, but there's Mike Evans with his eight receptions, 103 yards, and two touchdowns. Uh, uh, his his form would have been an opponent last year in this game. Tyreek Hill now with the Dolphins, then T. Higgins, and of course, DK gotta go. Metcalf comes in at number five as we head into the Monday night game. Those are your top five leaders here. I think what was exciting for me is not just Mike Evans doing Mike Evans things, but because uh, that's what he does. He catches touchdowns. But Chris Godwin, Chris Godwin was one of the league leaders in snaps and routes uh, run in week number four. I mean, you know, like there was no like, hey, we're trying to ease him None back of that. in. And so that was exciting for me. Full steam ahead on Chris Godwin. And yes, Tom Brady suddenly looked like Tom Brady. If there's one concern out of that game from last night, it's this. Rashad White is a thing. Like they were using him down the stretch when they were trying to come back. Like I, like, I know they're really high on Rashad White and Leonard Fournette is still fine. But I think maybe instead of like the, you know, maybe it's now 75-25, 70-30 in terms of that running back backfield, whereas before it felt like it was like 80-20, 85-15 for Leonard Fournette. So I think, I will say this, when we talk about uh, waivers tomorrow, Rashad White, I think, especially if you have Leonard Fournette and you don't already have him, becomes a priority. Or if you want to screw over whoever has Leonard Fournette in your league, I do think Rashad White, who's out there in a ton of leagues, um, is really kind of an interesting player because I know they love him in Tampa Bay, and he was impressive last night. And Fournette's been dealing with little things on the lead up to every single game at this he point. He always is, so. but that's, always. That's, 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 the, that's the game with Uncle yeah. Lenny. Right? Yeah, the Lenny experience. Yeah. Okay, to the biggest offensive output game of the weekend, the Lions and the Seahawks combined for 93 Dude. points in this game. Uh, truly an absurd offensive output. Barry, before we do get to the individual performances, do want to hear what Geno Smith had to say after the big win for Seattle. Who's Let me tell you something. I'm always in on whatever Geno Smith wants to say. That guy's a quote machine. Yes, he is. I'm feeling fast out there. Uh, there were some lanes out there. They doubled DK on the first run. They doubled Tyler. So, you know, obviously when they double those guys, then there's no one really covering me. So um, there's just opportunities out there to run the ball and, you know, was able to get that done. This maybe exceeding your expectations. No, I can play better. Definitely not exceeding my expectations. I can play a lot better. Um, just playing better. Start with the man right there, yeah, Geno Smith. Play a lot better. 31.7 fantasy they points. They wrote him off. He ain't right back. That's exactly right. Geno Smith on a mission right now. The Lions defense, it's bad. There's no way around it. It's awful. Yeah. The amount of points they've scored it's, in their one and three. It is, if I may, commanders-esque. Yes, there you go. I mean, uh, let's be clear here, right? I mean, they gave up almost 50, 50 points in this one, right? They gave up 48. The Lions, as entertaining they are, they're one and three. They've only beaten one team in the NFL. That's my Washington Commanders. God bless.
Hail the commanders, hail victory. All right. So with Gino now. Yes, sir. What do we do with Gino as how do we view him? Is he a streaming okay. option, de opponent dependent, or is Gino actually showing, hey, I can be a viable fringe fantasy quarterback right now that's worth rostering because this was a massive performance for him also and, on the ground yeah by the way and i want to i want to give a shout out real quickly uh to michael smith because on fantasy football pregame are we each made a bold prediction mine was uh you know uh mine was about josh reynolds ended up working out we'll talk about that in a second but his was about geno smith if i have this correct i believe he said 330 passing yards two passing touchdowns 30, pa 30 rushing yards and another rushing touchdowns. Three touchdowns um, for Geno Smith. Almost he literally it. almost nails it. Geno Smith winds up with 320 passing yards, two passing touchdowns, 49 yards rushing, and a touchdown. Ultimately, a better fantasy day than Michael even predicted. Unbelievable call by my host, Michael Smith, on Fantasy Football for Game. So, shout out to him. Here's their upcoming schedule. So, the answer is maybe. They play the, the next four. They're at the Saints. These are the Seahawks now. At the Saints, they're home to the Cardinals. They're at the Chargers. They're home to the Giants. And then they're at the Cardinals again. It's not so terrible. It's not terrible. I don't love the matchup at New Orleans. New Orleans, pretty good defense. Um, I don't love that particular matchup, even though, I mean, whatever. They're coming over from London and, you know, Kirk did all right against them. But I love the home game against the Cardinals. I'm down for the home game against the Giants. You know what I mean? Like, at the Chargers, not ideal. But, like, I, I think a lot of points but, to the Texans. But, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. He, he did. I, so I think it depends on the size of your league. Like, it's not a definite no that he's not a streaming option. But I think what's most important here, Connor, is the fact that he's good enough and the Seahawks coaching offense has enough confidence in him that you can't just suddenly say, like, whatever with DK Metcalf, yes. whatever with, uh, with Tyler Penny. Lockett, whatever with Rashad Penny. Like, and we'll talk about the running backs here as well. But I just don't think you can write those guys off. Will Disley in a deep tight end premium league. I am semi obsessed with Will Disley. He's my new Mo Alley Cox. But I mean, like, Will Disley keep that there's something there, right? I mean, Will Disley's actually being okay, like, had a nice game here. So I just, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know that he's necessarily uh, definitely like a streaming option, but Rashad Penny, Rashad Penny just has a monster game here. And I think that's really interesting, too. People forget how good he was down the stretch last week, right? It's the, it's the most rushing yards in a game since week 18 of 2021, right? He, he, he's averaging 5.96 yards per carry. He's played at least 69% of the snaps in three out of four games this year. He's just getting massive usage. We've seen him be fantasy productive. He's healthy right now. And with the injury to Travis Homer, we thought, oh, maybe we'll see some DJ Dallas on third down. We didn't. We saw a little bit of Kenneth Walker not here. Not as much as we thought. No. It, they're all in on um, uh, Rashad Penny, who winds up with, as we mentioned, 18 total touches here compared with just uh, nine for Kenneth Walker. So two to one. Um, and Penny looked every bit the part of an RB1. So for those that, uh, that drafted him late, I think you found yourselves – you know, somebody that you can count on. I'd want Kenneth Walker, just given the injury history of yeah. Penny. But given how well they're doing, they're 2-2, two and two, um, and he's a lot cheaper than Russell Wilson, um, you know, for another team that's also 2-2. For yeah. a long time. So, anyway, I do think um, I think both those guys are interesting, too. And it wouldn't be a show if I just didn't mention Will Disley. 4 for 39 in the touchdown on uh, on four targets. Again, deeper league, you know me, with, I'm obsessed with deep league tight ends. But Will Disley's on that radar. DK Metcalf, third most receiving yards in a game in his career. He had seven catches, 149 yards. Gino targeted him 10 times. Yeah, 10 times. I mean, DK honestly, is live and well. Yeah, listen, I had Lockett on the love list. I had Gino on the love list. I had Jared Goff on the love list. I had Josh Reynolds on the love list. Like, well, let's I let's nailed, go there. I, I nailed this game six ways till Sunday, except I had DK on the hate list because I thought Jeff Akuda would do a good job shutting him down. Jeff Akuda did not do a good job in shutting him down. So, uh, mea culpa there on DK Metcalf. But I know the rest of this game. So, let's go there with the Lions' side of the ball. You have to start with Jared Goff. QB5 yeah. through the first four weeks of the season, Barry. QB5. How many times have we said it, though? How many times have we said about Jared Goff? It's every week we have the Jared every Goff Every week combo. we have the conversation, you and I. And the fact is, is that when you give Jared Goff time – He's totally fine. And he always and has I, time. And I think it's a great offensive line. And I think what's exciting here is that, like, the, the questions were, well, can he do it without the – no DJ Shark, no Sun God. 
DeAndre Swift is out. Like, yeah, it's Seattle, but still, like, we recommended him as a start on, on fantasy football pregame. I still had him as QB 11. I had him on the love list. I was still like, listen, I think he's going to have a good game. I think uh, he's going to be very solid in this one. You can still trust him. Those are all things that I said. That ended up working out. 378 yards, four touchdowns, 39 times. I mean, he is, he is a, he's a top five fantasy quarterback. Here's, here's the entire list. The entire list of quarterbacks that have more fantasy points than Jared Goff, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes. That's it. That's the list. Not Justin Herbert, not Russell Wilson, not Aaron Rodgers, not Tom Brady, not Kyler Murray, Jared freaking Goff. And so the question, at some point, you just got to say, like, this is legit. Like, it really is. So... His next game, his next four games now it gets tough. He's at the Patriots. He's at the Cowboys. He's home to the Dolphins. He's home to the Packers. So, it, you know, like it's one thing to be, it's one thing to be, you know, QB five against the Eagles, Commanders, Vikings, and Seahawks. Only the Eagles are really a good defense of those four. And that was the first game of the season. Yep. But still, I, I mean, like their defense is bad and he's good. I mean, like give credit where credit is due. I believe. Again, it's a it's a um, again it's a tougher stretch coming up here, but if you lost Dak Prescott and you picked up Jared Goff and you're like I'm just going to piece it together, I think you have a QB one on your hands, uh, you know. And I don't think he's rostered in 100 percent of leagues. No yet. way, yeah, no way. Let, so let me frame it like this to close yeah. the door here on Jared Goff. Is their defense so bad that him dropping back 40 times a game seems seems sustainable at this point? Yes. It looks that bad right now. And it's not, like you said, it's not about to get much easier with the schedule. So we could have garbage time for Jared Goff. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about Jamal Williams in the backfield here because we know DeAndre Swift is down. Mm -hmm. Jamal Williams, 19 carries, 108 yards, two touchdowns. All Jamal Williams does is score touchdowns. You have to be at the point where even when DeAndre Swift does return eventually, you don't just completely forget about Jamal Williams. That's how good he's been behind this offensive line. He, going into this game, when DeAndre Swift was healthy and active. I mean, and he's been banged up the last couple of weeks, Swift, I mean. Yep. But the fact of the matter is, is going into this game, Jamal Williams was uh, tied for the league lead in goal-to-go goal, goal -go rush attempts. Uh, yes, they trust him down there. He's been very productive. He proved once again, 19 for 108, two touchdowns uh, yesterday, 23.9 fantasy points, that when given the opportunity, especially in this offense, that offensive line, he's a top 10 fantasy running back. And so, yes, I... I think he is a vi viable flex when Swift comes back. But by the way, who knows when that happens? The expectation as it is right now. So again, next we talked about this. Next week they uh, next week they play the uh, New England Patriots, and then they're on a bye in Week Six. Then they're at Dallas, Miami, Green Bay that I mentioned. Um, so you know my my expectation is that he comes back in Week Seven for the Dallas game, uh, but. Uh, but yes, even when and by the way, given Swift's injury history, that doesn't mean, even if when Swift comes back doesn't mean he won't get hurt again. I, I'm with you. Uh, you know, he's going to be a top ten running back for me uh, in week five, and you absolutely hang on to him through the bye. He is a must roster as well. T.J. Hawkinson continues to roll on as well. Like you know, most receptions by a tight end in Lions history. All right. right. Well, I mean, I don't know what else to say about T.J. Hawkinson. Start your tight ends. Yes. Uh, listen. Start, not rocket science. Yeah, exactly. Start your Unless tight you ends against Pitts. Seattle. I mean, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get there. But anyway, but whatever. Hawkinson did what good tight ends should do against Seattle, which is he feasted. Also, the fact that no St. Brown helped as well. But Hawkinson's a top five fantasy tight end the rest of the way. Last Rotor World headline here. Kenny Pickett. We you finally know. see Kenny Pickett. Uh, an interesting debut for Kenny Pickett. 10 for 13, 120 yards. No touchdowns through the air. Three interceptions, two rushing touchdowns. It was quarterback sneak day for Kenny Pickett. Mike Tomlin, uh, after the game, had an interesting quote on putting Pickett in and what the future might hold for him as they enter a tough part of the schedule. Let's hear from Tomlin. I just thought we needed a spark, man. We didn't do much um, in the first half, uh, not enough offensively, and you know, thought he could provide a spark for us. I thought he did some good things. I thought you know, there was some energy there. Um, we scored some touchdowns, but obviously um, we also turned the ball over. Whew. So, all right, the upcoming schedule for the Steelers right now, maybe why Tomlin did not commit fully to pick it going forward. They are at Buffalo, 
They are home against the Bucks. They are at Miami, at Philly. That's a bad of a four-game stretch, as you will see in the NFL, folks. There's no way around it. Barry, I want to ask you like this, putting just the picket playing storyline aside, what is the trickle effect of Pickett playing in this offense for everybody else? Because George yeah. Pickens looked really good with really him. Really good. He, 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 got, he got a uh, 30%. Once Kenny Pickett came into the game, George Pickens had a 30% target share. He caught all four of his targets, 71 yards. Pat Fryermuth had a 30% target share. Deontay Johnson just 15%. Chase Claypool under 8%. Super small sample size, right? And it's also what were the Jets giving him. But I think we know a couple of things. George Pickens really talented. Oh, yeah. Right? This is a kid that, Connor, you, you, do, you study the draft. You do a great job for Bleach Report every single year. Coming out of college, talent-wise, there were other questions about Pickens. But talent-wise. All the talent in the world. Pickens the first the world. was a first-round yeah. talent, right? A lot, of, a lot yes. of teams had him as a first-round talent. Again, there are other questions about Pickett that made him fall. But, right, yes. Yeah. So there were no questions about. So he's there now, right? And by the way, I just want to say this, just as long as I'm talking about wide receivers in Pittsburgh, every single time you see Antonio Brown do something crazy, which you did this weekend, I'll just let you Google it, Antonio Brown this weekend. Um, every time you see Antonio Brown week, uh, do something crazy like he did this past weekend, I feel like we should go back in time and w- award another Coach of the Year award to Mike Tomlin. Like give him a – do ribbons instead. So I mean, like just, just – yeah, yeah, like something like – like. You know, Cub Scout badges or yeah. something, right? Boy Scout badges, like just like, you know, Medal of Honors, you know, uh, like Purple Hearts. I Because you didn't have any idea how crazy wa- how crazy Antonio Brown was when he was in Pittsburgh. No. And then, you know. and like, Those are the Raiders. And there, were a couple, there were like a couple of things that slipped out, whatever the Facebook Live thing that he did in the locker room. But, you know, down are, right, you know, but like, I mean, like. Yep. Anyway, like, whatever. Antonio Brown's a sad story. I'm not trying to yeah. make light of him. I, I think there's some serious uh, mental health issues there with A.B. But what I would say here, moving on, is just Tomlin, Tomlin's a hell of a head coach and uh, has the full support of, his, uh, of ownership and management there, obviously. And he's not somebody that is reactionary. Uh, having said that, he's also, you know, he's a smart guy. Kenny Pickett's the better player. Like, the question now isn't if. Now the question is when. And so, yeah, maybe you look at the schedule and say, like, you know what, let's give the kid a chance. But on the other hand, they're trying to win football games. Like, Mike Tomlin has never had a losing record in his NFL career. It's unbelievable. And so I think that when we get to waivers tomorrow, we're going to talk a lot about uh, George Pickens. I do think also Kenny Pickett is worth preemptively. I Again, he is going to be the starting quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm not worried about Deontay Johnson. He's still going to get his. And I do think it helps the other guys like Fryer Muth and, uh, and Pickens, who George Pickens is coming. Yeah, again, we saw it over the second half of last year with like guys like Waddle and St. Brown. Sometimes it takes rookie wide receivers a little bit. But, it, like, again, George Pickens is inevitable. I'm telling you guys. So, yeah. Him and Pickett should both be uh, pickups this week on waivers. One note on the three interceptions for Pickett, a jump ball to Claypool, a tip pass by Sauce Gardner, and a Hail Mary. So not the worst three interceptions in the world, not the most egregious. No. All right. But, we, and they saw positive – like, they, they saw positive things out of him that they haven't seen out of Trubisky all year yeah. long. Like, it's so – again, Tomlin's going to look at the tape and be like, what are we doing? Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least – being too lazy to click out of it after the you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotoworld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.